You probably heard about the generative fill update in Photoshop, which can basically create or remove anything as long as you're able to put it into words. But can generative fill do anything and everything? Well, let's find out and test the limits of this, well, admittedly awesome feature in Photoshop better. Let's start with image extension. With generative fill, you can extend an image and let it fill in the blank areas, so to basically create more photo. This worked well when I did it a little bit in this image here, where I cut off the bottom. So I was able to fill in the part that I missed and it looked great. So how far can we push that? Let's start by extending the bottom. Hit generate a fill and hit enter. Let's find an option that we like. Um, so far, so good. Let's drag out the sides far too much and do the same. And the result is, oh my. So it tries to keep the general look of the image, but the lighting starts to be off. Things are getting blurred and, well, simply a little bit weird. Having said that, if we zoom out, it's still kind of cool, but also not really. So dragging out a landscape scene with a lot of detail results in loss of detail in the added parts. Well, that's good to learn. Here's another example from Ireland. And doing the same, it kept the general color feel, which is awesome, but things also start to become slightly blurry. How about this city scene? I know this is a rude test because the perspective is weird and there is a slight fisheye effect, but let's drag it out either way. On first glance, it kind of worked, but when you zoom in, you realize, uh, not really. The buildings are warped and it becomes somewhat disturbing to look at. Okay, so adding a lot of small details seems difficult, which makes sense because the feature is trying to add things based on stock images. Let's check this out here. This is a building in Rome and while there is a lot of detail, generally all these things in the image are simple. So if we drag that out, we get a much better result. I assume because windows are a common thing on stock images and they can easily be incorporated. Okay, with the extension we kind of hit the limit, so let's check out another one of those awesome features. And that is removing things. Here I have a super busy image from Tokyo with a friend of mine in the middle. Let's try to remove all the people at the same time. So I take the lasso tool, make a generous and very bad selection around them and hit generate. And this is actually impressive. Despite the warped background, it managed to remove them all. In a previous video, I also tested removing very prominent people from a street image and that also worked like a charm. So when it comes to removing things, I was unable to find the limit. Did you? Drop it in the comments. So let's try something else, adding things. Here I have an image from the Lofoten Islands and I tried to simply put random things into the image. First, I placed a phone on the table, which kind of worked. Then some coins, which also kind of worked. And now, because why not, a person in the back. And let's turn on a candle and also put a lighter right next to it. We've got to light it somehow, right? Next to the key here, let's put an apple. Oh, and of course, don't forget the coffee. All in all, I would say adding such things to a photo works for about 60%. You can see the perspective is often slightly off, shadows are a little bit weird, or the blending didn't work too well. There seem to be easy things like candles, but some other things it really can't do that well. I would say the limit here is the availability of stock images of those objects in different angles and different lighting situations that the generative fill feature is using. Adding other more common things like uh, clouds, boats, fireworks, or flowers works well. Or going back to this image here, we can even make a person look out of the window. So some things work, some things don't. That means, however, we can't find a proper limit here. It'll depend a little bit on your usage and what you want to add. Side note, during my testing, I used this picture of a monkey and I don't know why, ask generative fill to add human eyes. I, I did have some trouble sleeping after that. I also found out never add anything living to your photos. I try to add sheep to this photo and these sheep scare me. The person looking out of the window in this image we made earlier also scares me. Or here I asked it to add a person looking through the window and all of them are slightly broken. Maybe I was just unlucky, but just to avoid nightmares, I'm gonna, you know, stick to adding non-living things for the moment. So, from what I can see, at least during my testing, the limits lie in the extension of images with a lot of detail and adding objects to places with specific perspective and lighting. It does work for some objects though, so that limit really depends on your usage. And of course, from what I have seen, never add living things, but when it comes to removing things, that doesn't seem to be a limit. I encourage you to try it out. Install Photoshop better and just play around. For more details on how the tool works, you can check out the video that is floating around somewhere here. And if you like this video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up as well as subscribe button to help out the channel if you so desire. Thank you for watching and as always, stay safe and have a good one.